You work. Okay. 30% of packets of natural crunch crisps contain a free gift. Jan buys five packets each week. Uh, the number of free gifts that Jan receives in a week is determined by X. Name a suitable product distribution which, with which to model X, giving the value of any parameters, values of any parameters. State any assumptions necessary for the distribution to be a valid model. And we're giving four marks for this. Wow. Right. Um, well, hang on, where, was, where was this in the overall picture? <coughs> uh, there we go. We had a geometric distribution question. Question two. So you've already done that as you were working through the paper. We're on to question five. We only really know two probability distributions, and one of them we've already done a big question on. So I think there's a big clue there, isn't there? That we're going to use the binomial distribution for this. Um, why, why does it so well fit the binomial distribution? Well, um, five packets a week. So we've got a fixed number of trials, fixed number of, of times that it's going to happen. So that's, that's quite nice. Um, and we've got a constant probability of success finding a, a free gift. So we're going to use the binomial distribution. And the, the parameters that we're going to use, we're going to say that x is the number <coughs> of packets containing a free gift, or number of free gifts. There are, um, in a week, there are five independent trials. There's a constant probability of success of 0 0.3. Um, So maybe we could have just summarised that by writing x follows a binomial distribution with 5 and 0.3 as the parameters. And, uh, and it said, what assumptions are we making for the distribution to be a valid model? Well, we need to turn that into being about the situation. We can't just do it in vague. This is what we always say about binomial distribution things. So we need to refer to the, the crisps and the, the whole of that arrangement. So we're assuming that, um, that the probability of 0.3 remains constant through all the, the crisps that are bought. Okay, so that's assume that all crisp packets <coughs> have 0.3 probability of containing. <coughs> And also, we've got to assume that the packets are all independent, that the, the probability remains um, independent. Okay. Um. <coughs> They, they really, they, we needed this to be in terms of context. So, so note, in the mark scheme for this, they do say not probability of success constant and not number of gifts received as independent or events independent. It's, a, it's got to be about the packets and packets containing a gift. Um, actually, I can, we should maybe put packets containing a gift. Are all independent. Okay. Um, so we've got to we've got to put it in terms of the situation that's occurring. Right. And we're now asked to analyse some stuff with this. So assume that your model is valid. Find the probability of x being less than or equal to two. Um, 
Well, I mean, this, this is, uh, it's not a difficult thing to work out. Less than or equal to 2 would be 0, 1 or 2 added together. So we could work out the individual probabilities. Or we could use the formula booklet, and we've got the formula booklet somewhere. There it is. Um, 5 is one of the tables, the first table that we've got in here. So we could get these probabilities straight from our cumulative probability tables. So there we go, we've had n being 5, we've had 0 0.3 as our probability. We're looking for x being less than or equal to 2. And so where these two meet up is that 1.8369. And that's a really easy mark to get from that, isn't it? Um, the next one said the probability of x being equal to 2. I don't know which, which is easiest for this, whether to do it from the, the table or whether to do it purely from just working it out. This would be, um, well it's 5c2, 0.3 squared, 0.7 cubed. Or, <coughs> We can do the probability of x being less than or equal to 2, take away the probability of x being less than or equal to 1, and both of those will give us exactly the same answer of 5. I've just got 0.3087. Get 0.3087. Good. Okay, so either way that we want to other that is uh, is fine. The last part of this said, find the probability that in the next seven weeks there are exactly three weeks in which Jan receives exactly two free gifts. I love the way that you read that for the first time and think surely there's nonsense involved in that. Um, the use of the word exactly too many times in one sentence. But find the probability that in the next seven weeks, there are exactly three weeks in which she receives two free gifts. Exactly two free gifts. Well, um, we've, now, we've now kind of set up an overall binomial distribution involving little binomial distributions, haven't we? Because we're now saying that there are seven weeks and a success. So there are, each week is a trial, a success is receiving exactly two free gifts in a week. So we're, we're kind of now thinking about a new distribution for part three. Let's call it Y. And Y is the probability that we receive exactly two free gifts. In an individual week. So Y follows a binomial distribution Um, no, it's, hang on, that's not what we're after. That's the success, isn't it? So Y is the number of weeks in which we get exactly two free gifts. <coughs> that's what we're thinking of now. So our success is two free gifts. <coughs> there are seven weeks in the process that we're looking at. And the probability of exactly two free gifts is 0 0.3087 that we just calculated. And we want to know the probability that y equals, there are exactly three weeks in which you can, he, he she, in which Jan, I don't know, receives exactly two free gifts. Is Jan a boy's name? 
It's generally a girl's name, isn't it? It could be a boy's name. He may be a Danish footballer. Jan Molby. I'm too old. Your brother's called Jan. 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 Right. It could be a boy's name. There we go. Shall we pretend it's a boy? I'm thinking of it as being. Does anybody remember Jan Molby? Right, sorry, I've got distracted. Danish footballer from the 80s. Very good. Before you were born. Thanks. Right. Property of y being 3 then is 7c3. That's three successes, so 0 0.3087 cubed. And there will be four weeks in which we have a failure, so 1 minus 0 0.3087 to the 4. And we need to put that into our calculator and see what answer we get. 7C3 times 0 0.3087 to the power of 3 times 1 minus 0 0.3087 to the power of 4. And I get 0.235. The three centimeters. And uh, fortunately, that's also the answer we get on Mars. Okay. I, one, one thing, I, you know, I, I would suggest putting that all into your calculator in one go rather than, than doing it with a bit in the time you know, Because there's a danger that you make a mistake and you need to stick it all in at once. There we go. And that's math.